had a very nice, nice childhood. And my, my father was a photographer, photojournalist. My mother was an editor, so very intellectual family. Not religious at all. Um, Jewish, but not religious. I went to law school. Welcome to Happiness and the City. This is Barbara. And today we'll focus on the concept of branding, brand, B-R-A-N-D. We have been talking a lot um, in the media about laws and justice, but uh, laws without a sense of order can create disorder. And one of the problems today is that um, people use the word law or regulations or laws to assert a sense of justice. But often the outcome is total chaos, destruction and um, malfunction of harmony in society. And we see today this is happening in um, the realm of uh, accusations for all kinds of mis m uh, uh, misbehaviors in workplace and other situations. And the outcome is not order but chaos. So those laws and those accusations are not uh, applied in the right way and are applied in a certain um, chaotic manner that creates a lot of more um, injustice and destruction and um, ruin. So I wanted to counter this by focusing our attention on some sense of words that order life around us. And one of the great concepts is the concept of brand. This concept has very interesting history because uh, originally it was used to put a sign on property uh, whether, uh, whether it was um, um, real estate or um, herds and uh, the focus and the meaning was to shield it from theft. Um, the uh, numbering on houses on streets is widely used as an ordering system and then we also used to have branding on animals um, especially cows in the ancient world um, sheep and eventually that um, practice of uh, putting a sign that identifies and differentiates a property from other properties oh, became very popular because it was an easy way to discover someone's uh, loss in case um, it was stolen or to aff assert and affirm and confirm authority of a property because it would signal that the other um, um, person who wants to put a claim on that property, doesn't have any rights to it. The uh, wonderful free encyclopedia Wikipedia um, defines it, this concept of brand as a brand, is a name, term, design, symbol or other feature that distinguishes an organization or product from its rivals in the eyes of the customer. Brands are used in business, marketing, and advertising. So you see the ordering system here, and I encourage you to read the whole article in Wikipedia that 
develops this idea, um, my purpose is to use this concept and then apply to some of the um, situations that is uh, right now creating a lot of uh, chaos in the world. So as you see, the word brand can apply to name, to term, to design, symbol, or other feature that distinguishes an organizational product from its rivals in the eyes of the customer. Now this is a business concept, but it applies also to names, and countries have names, like the United States of America, Russia, Germany. So the concept of brand and the concept of the country helps us to distinguish one country from another country. And um, the reason the names of countries developed is precisely to create a sense of ownership and property um, identification for people who belong to a certain country and um, to businesses that are connected with that country. Then um, other countries know they own rights and um, would not um, interfere with that brand of one country unless there is a war. Today there is a very strange situation in which people have a lot of focus on the concept of brand in businesses but totally ignore the concept of brand within names of particular countries. And as a result, we have warlike situation, there are some actual wars happening, um, especially in the Middle East, or there are threats of wars. And the most dangerous, of course, right now is conflict between uh, United States of America and North Korea that involves two nuclear powers. So how can we bring to order this very strange situation of namelessness in the context of application of brand to the names of countries? Because with businesses, we have no problem. We understand that if um, we deal with Apple or Google or Amazon or Facebook, that those are brain, brands with um, specific logos designed by very famous, wonderful designers. Uh, there's no difficulty for us to affirm the right of those companies to the value that the brand represents and to the content that the particular brand represents. Now, most countries in the world developed over centuries from certain tribes and tribes are always connected to houses of families that created those tribes. God himself recognizes this as a very important matter because he created a commandment that um, teaches people not to covet the neighbor's house or the contents of the neighbor's house, everything that is contained within that house. We learned to identify houses in two ways. By family name, uh, we have House of Romanov, House of Grabowski, House of Knoll, House of um, Forbes, etc., etc. There are many, many, many 
um, names that are associated with houses and people who were born to families of those houses have birthright to use the family name in connection to the house in which they were created. So if somebody is born to a certain family and another family from another country and another tribe comes in wants, and wants to claim it, right there there is um, a violation of the commandment about house ownership and ownership of things and also violation of birthright of people who have right to a particular house and contents of the house. I come from a very ancient um, family and I come from a very ancient country, Poland. Uh, I immigrated to America and by extension I understand the history of American houses because I grew up with tremendous respect to what is in my house, my family house and what is in family houses of my friends and neighbors. For me it's a natural, normal thing to affirm. And when I came to America, I continued doing this. But today, America has been going through torment of virtually um, a of, of uh, certain very strange elimination effort of family houses. But America has family houses. Um, they developed over many centuries within the context of the United States, but also they are connected to the family houses of people who came here and continued family houses. In my case, there are many people from Europe uh, who come from very good homes, very good houses in Europe, and they continued those um, um, traditions and birthright from the houses in the United States of America. And this has value. It is a sort of brand value that has to be affirmed because it shields ownership of value that comes from houses from rivals. In the um, case of the United States, there are rivals in other continents. Um, and this has to be understood and affirmed. That's just the way it is. And we have to understand that that kind of value affirmation creates peace because it creates recognition for children to know the difference between what is their own birthright and what is birthright of other people in their neighborhood, in their cities, in, you know, in the countries that they learn about. It creates order in the world. And it also creates peace and love and friendship because people affirm mutually the birthright to what they have from their families. It is an absolute foundation of peace because if a person is deprived of the house, both within the context of family birthright and physical house. In uh, many cases those two are connected. Uh, in some cases new houses are built but on the, um, uh, on the experience from the house inherited uh, from previous generations. So all countries on earth have a concept of inheritance. For instance um, my parents left inheritance, I have a right to it, and my brother, not somebody else's um, child. 
And it is like this all over the world. It creates a sense of order. The same with um, contents of the house. Some people come from houses that have huge experience with construction. Other people uh, have a huge experience with farming. Somebody else with education and politics. Uh, children who grow up who grow up in such houses naturally um, develop abilities in what is um, activity within the context of houses they grow up with. A good and orderly government would affirm this and nurture and nourish it because this not only creates peace within life of that person, within family members, but also creates peaceful connection to neighbors and then develops uh, opportunities to have good lasting friendships. And also that eliminates the conflicts, which means that would eliminate the number of uh, wars and enemies. When you look today at what is happening in the speech of governments all over the world, virtually nobody talks about it. People are so focused on budgets and on um, all kinds of goods that should be created for distribution that they forgot that the problem is because of lack of attention paid to family houses and to birthrights. There's a lot of um, uh, energy focused on copyrights and uh, patents and um, all kinds of access to jobs. There's right now war about um, workplaces and what rules should be within the workplaces. But there's virtually nothing talked about in, uh, in the realm of birthrights. And the need to understand it, to create peace in the hearts of people and to create peaceful connections between people. Because if a person is um, ignored in birthrights, then the person develops sadness because it is almost um, like an attempt to ignore the person's family descent. There's another commandment about it, honor thy mother and thy father. So I have to honor my mother and my father, you honor your mother and your father, etc. throughout the whole world. So once again, God who created us knows that this is the foundation of peace, not only between us and our parents, but also between us and him, and that this honoring of our descent, our parents, creates longevity of life. So it's connected with value of life. So, when we have now all of those discussions about money all over the world, we have to come back globally to the sense of ordering in the matters of diverse brands in diverse countries. We have to understand that every country has its own heritage and in order to create peace between countries we have to respect that if ignored then rivalries between those diverse countries will create wars, chaos and all of those horrible things that we witness almost every day in the news. So the governing principles 
that inform governments about the direction of action cannot ignore matters of life. And life and birthright, family houses, parents of children, contents of the houses in which the children are born are very foundational. So I believe we can recover peace in the world when we refocus our attention again to peace and respect of where we come from. We cannot have love between diverse religious groups if we ignore and disrespect our own. This always begins as a foundation for respect to others. When we respect what is within us, when we value it, some people would have a huge birthright and some other people not so, so big, but everybody has it because that's how God creates us. He gives us life and then if there is not sufficient life, we ask Jesus Christ of Nazareth to give us life in abundance because that's why he came to the earth to give us life more abundantly. So instead of attacking each other's identities, we should affirm them, honor them within ourselves, and that naturally will create honoring of identities in our neighbors and in other countries. I grew up in a neighborhood that had that. And that's how I was brought up. I was brought up to re respect my origins from my father and my mother, and then to respect origins and houses of everybody around me, and then to have that respect to all countries of the earth. But that foundation came with me being affirmed about my own house and what the contents of that house are and how to develop and improve on, on it. That was my primary focus. Our focus when we were brought up was not on what other kids have. Our focus was on what we have and how to develop it, what talents we have and how to develop those talents. Like I wasn't very good in drawing, so I didn't bother to go that direction. My brother was excellent in drawing. He ended up graduating from Academy of Fine Arts. I didn't look at what he had, but what I had. And I have this love of communicating with other people. So I developed that. And I think that in order to restore the peace in the world, we have to rethink the system of what we consider justice that we have to include birthright and houses that we inherit as very important parts of justice because justice disconnected from this created so much hatred, created so much enmity and um, conflict that now some people even demand that the other people love them. Love should come naturally from the well-ordered way in which we affirm love that comes from our parents who created us. We all are created in love and God loves us. And love is a natural expression of joy of life. So, I encourage us to look at the concept of brand not only as concept applicable to businesses but also to nations and countries and to strengthen the value that is within every nation and within every family house on earth within all of us. 
that will focus on what we have and how to improve on it and develop it and also how to enjoy life because life is to be enjoyed it shouldn't be constantly aggrieved whether somebody grieves us on us or we do it to other people living in this constant conflict accusations prosecutors um, destroying um, workplaces it is a terrible context for enjoyment of life and it will not bring in beauty and happiness and um, affirmation of neighborly agape love. It will only create more stress and more um, enmity. So let's refocus again on what every individual on earth has, which is family home. Let's focus on this, strengthen it, respect the um, origins of our parents, and then build within ourselves what is beautiful inheritance from our parents and from our God. And then from this point, we'll create ordering relationship between ourselves and other people and then we can rejoice in what we all have and when we rejoice at what we all have we become strong when we envy what other people have that creates weakness and violence and